Computers and the various new technologies are hard. So let's do this thing and make it easy. Uh, well, easier. Since I've done my settings video back in May, I've gotten hundreds of comments, many of them asking about the specifics on why I chose certain options. And now I've learned a lot since that video, and with an introduction of Vulkan, I went into heavy research and testing mode. And now I've finalized my settings to something I consider to be my holy grail. But in order to replicate it for yourself, you need to understand how the technology works and what the goal of your settings should be. So I'll be going over each of the various technologies I've used to hit what I consider to be my holy grail and the goal of each. I'll be explaining how each technology can benefit you and what the main things to consider when trying to hone in your settings for any game, not just Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, before there's any confusion, my general concepts for settings have not changed since my initial thoughts back in May. Besides some tweaks to the TAA render scaling, just in order to get my performance down in order to do what I'm gonna be speaking about, almost all my settings are pretty much the same. I will, however, link a Google Doc down below with the most up-to-date settings, if anyone is curious. Common conversations that I see in the community when talking about what you should be doing with your settings in Siege typically involves just getting the highest frame rate possible without taking anything else into consideration. Nowhere have I seen the conversations about frame timings and input lag consistency that I've seen in other communities like Overwatch. And while yes, high FPS is always better than low FPS in terms of reaction time, frame timings, and input lag, it is not the only thing to consider. Frame timings is the spacing in between your frames almost like a music beat in a song. If the beat is off, you can just tell and it sounds wrong. Same with frame timings. If your game looks jumpy, it's possibly because your frame timings are all over the place. These frame timings also control the amount of input lag that your machine receives, making your movements inconsistent if the frame timings are variable. The best real world example that I can think of off the top of my head is uh, say you're shooting a basketball, and as long as you only have one person guarding you, everything's normal. But once a second opponent comes anywhere near you, the ball all of a sudden becomes a girl's ball, and for which those who don't know, they're smaller and lighter than normal basketballs. So all of a sudden you're throwing a ball over the backboard or into the street or stands due to the weight and size change. And while this is an over-exaggeration, the effects of frame input lag inconsistency can have a similar effect. When lots of things are happening on your screen and your frame rate drops, all of a sudden your input lag will spike and your shots will be off. Now, before I get into this next part, let me explain a couple of different technologies. First up is VSync or vertical sync. VSync was created to fix a specific issue of screen tearing, which is a byproduct of a mismatch between the frames that your hardware, GPU, is putting out and the refresh rate of your monitor. The tearing occurs as the graphic card sends a new frame while the current frame is still being shown on your display. So VSync attempts to reduce or eliminate tearing by forcing your graphics card hardware to match or sync with the refresh rate of the display. This delay is showing the following frame, which causes input lag and is not an optimal solution. FreeSync and G-Sync on the other hand, take the complete opposite approach. They instead dynamically adjust the monitor's refresh rate to match the frames that the graphics card is putting out. So specific hardware like newer generation video cards plus a FreeSync or G-Sync mo supported monitor are required for this type of functionality. Side note that G-Sync is also currently not working on Vulkan, but a future patch may fix that. Now with those technologies explained, let's go over setting strategy. Now, when I run tests like the benchmarking tool, for example, the number I focus on isn't the high FPS count for that sweet flex, but instead the low number to see how my system dips under the highest of stress. This number is the baseline that you want to know in order to understand where your system will be consistent. This is a frame rate that you can achieve no matter what your current game throws at you. Once you figure out your lowest number, you want to set a frame limit. This can be done in one of multiple ways, but one of two ways that I recommend. One is built into Siege, but it isn't perfect. And the other is a third party tool, a little more complex, but it offers a perfectly smooth frame timing. This limit should be as close to one frame below your monitor's refresh rate if you're using a FreeSync or G-Sync monitor. I, for example, am running a, my cap at 143 FPS locked as my monitor is 144 Hertz display. If I set it to 144, it would be technically above my FreeSync range because sometimes you would have tearing because the frame rate could technically be at 144.3 or two or some decimal point in, the, in that area. 
Now, I want to note in the examples and the testing I've done and with the people I've done it with, majority of the users that were testing were using a FreeSync or G-Sync supported monitor. This is what generates the best results and something you should strive for when looking at technology and monitor purchases going forward, as some of the older tech won't support it and it's not going to give you as smooth as frame rate. So that's just my general recommendation. Now, with that being said, let me show you how to set the frame limit on each of these options and show you the differences between them. Now, the in-game frame limit can be accessed via your game settings.ini file, which can be located in your My Documents, your My Games, Rainbow Six Siege. I have three accounts. Mine's going to be various different letters and numbers. Mine's the B one. Game settings.ini file. As it opens up on my other screen. As you scroll down, you'll see this section for display. There'll be a section here called FPS limit. By default, set to zero. Change this number to whatever your limit you want to set. In my case, if I want to set to 143 FPS, I would set it at 143. Save, file, save, and you're all set. The alternate program I'm using is called the River Tuner Statistics Server, or RTSS. Link in the description for download. This program offers a frame limiter, but with a built-in feature of smoothing out frame timings to perfection. It adds a very slight input delay, but something to see as well worth it, as I average 6.9 milliseconds at 143 FPS with RTSS versus my average of 6.5 to 6.7 milliseconds with the in-game limiter. Now this average has peaks and valleys throughout it. So the software looks way more complicated than it actually is, but by simply changing a value in the FPS limit field and pressing enter to save it, you will see the results in game. Now with the examples that I was showing you, I'm simply turning on a feature of the software to show a graph of the previous frames. If you want to see this for yourself, you can simply go into the setup along the bottom and click on the enable frame time history overlay. These numbers below just change the size of the graph if you want to customize it yourself. If you look at a software like this and feel overwhelmed, hell, some of my friends had the same reaction when I presented it to them. Simply, you can, you can simply just use the in-game tool. It will smooth out your frames, but just not as perfect as this tool will. That's all. That's why I wanted to present both. I also want to point out that this is not going to be a solution for all players, as it requires specific hardware in order to take full advantage of it. And if you don't, you might see adverse reactions. Uh, I have a friend who has a GTX card, but his monitor doesn't support FreeSync. So when he turned on a frame limiter for the first time, he actually saw more screen tearing. So if you do, just revert it, go back to how you're playing, and as you upgrade your monitor or video card, depending on what your low point is, maybe try these settings in the future. However, the point of this is to get the best, most consistent frame rate as possible. But as you're practicing, you're practicing with the exact same input lag and frame timings. That way you can be more consistent with your aim. A lot of people ask me is, how do I get more consistent? Some days I can't hit the broad side of a barn. The next day I'm SEAL Team 6. How do I become SEAL Team 6 all the time? This to me, and this has been one thing that's improved my game more, is having more consistent frame timings. Having less screen jitter, less screen tearing so I can track targets better. Being able to become more accurate, see things more clearly, is a big part of Siege. When I first tested this, I was stupid excited. Like, I was raving like an idiot. My friends thought I was crazy, my wife rolled her eyes at me, and first off, I had the smoothest frames I've ever seen in Siege, and making it the first time since I've had a free sync monitor for Siege, where Siege has been perfect. And secondly, I figured out I had a tool that would show me exactly when my frame rates dropped and how much input lag I was getting penalized for it giving me accurate data to lower my graphic settings to try and prevent it and smooth everything out. And I also want to point out that the examples that I showed are not the be all end all end game of Siege. This is not professional settings. This is what I'm running since the fact that I'm running a 1440p monitor. If I wanted to go full esports full in, first of all, I get a better video card. Mine's a little bit lacking right now, but I'd also get a 240 Hertz monitor. And just for fun, I, tr try to get my settings to 240 hertz to see what the input lag changes was. Now, I mentioned before that my input lag was at 6.9 milliseconds. 
Well, I lowered my settings down to 1080p and I jacked up the TAA render scale. We'll jack down all the way down to 25, putting it at the smallest possible solution. And I was able to lock my frame rate at 240 FPS. With that, the input lag was detected at 4.5 milliseconds locked. This is clearly quicker and clearly an advantage in competitive play. So if you're looking for a best in-game solution, 1080p monitor, 240 hertz, FreeSync monitor, plus an NVIDIA or a, or most right now, NVIDIA card. Uh, specifically a monitor that would support FreeSync, because I think that is the best solution that's currently going on right now, but that's my personal preference. But this is a two millisecond less of input delay. This will give you an advantage in reaction time, smoothness of frames with FreeSync, and more consistency in your gameplay. Now the idea for this video came from another YouTuber who I've mentioned before, it's Chris from Battle Nonsense. His content is second to none in terms of input lag, netcode, and frame timing type content. Lots of technical stuff that he breaks down and makes pretty simple. Uh, I just wanted to bring his concepts into the Siege community where I don't see them being talked about enough or well at all in general. So please, if you want to get more into this diverse yet technical type stuff, go check him out. Link will be in the description as well. If you need any clarifications or you have any questions about anything I talked about, leave a comment down below. And for more technical troubleshooting, join my Discord where we have a tech support channel. And as always, my name is JPZ. Take it easy.